far from its native homeland of Brazil, in the scenic Bitterroot Valley of western Montana, the National Horse of Brazil, the Manga Larga Marchandor, makes its home. Under the careful stewardship of Lori and Peter Socher, this national treasure of Brazil has found a home in North America. With a mutual love of riding outside the arena, they long for the perfect mountain and ranch horse combination. One that would have exceptional stamina and sure-footedness in the rugged mountains surrounding their home and also possessing smooth gates and inherent cow sense. Lori's search led her to the Manga Larga Marchador and they have never looked back. Welcome to Four Seasons Marchadors in Hamilton, Montana. The Marchador breed originated in Brazil over 200 years ago, where today is recognized and revered as the national horse. In the early 1800s, when Napoleon invaded Portugal, the King of Portugal fled to Brazil by ship taking with him his cavalry and some of his best stallions and began a breeding program with those imported stallions. The foundation of the Marchador breed came from the ancient Iberian horses of Portugal and included the Andalusian, the Criollo, the original working cow horse, and the Barb. These breeds were chosen to fulfill a need for horses that could work cattle, have tremendous endurance on the huge Brazilian ranches, and still be a comfortable ride for the owners of the ranch. This breed has been selectively bred for intelligence, amiable dispositions, soundness, endurance, versatility, and superb athleticism. Although there are over 300,000 marchadors in its Brazilian homeland, there are approximately 150 to 200 in North America. I got into the breed because I was looking for something a little bit different. I've ridden quarter horses for years. I rode cutting horses. I rode barrel horses. I've ridden all over the mountains. I do a lot of work for a cattle broker. And I wanted something that I could ride all over the mountains of Montana, the rough terrain in Montana, work cattle, but not being 25 anymore, I wanted something that when I got back, I didn't feel beat up and tired. And I can do that with these horses. I can come back after an eight hour ride. Everybody's in a long trot looking for cattle or moving cattle up in the mountains. And um, I'm looking for a fresh horse and they're looking for a bath. <laughs> the horses are really athletic and they're very, very sure footed and, and good minded. So when I'm in the mountains, they take good care of me. And I've crawled all over the place. Cattle don't stick to the roads. So we'll go down in some of these nasty ravines in the mountains of Montana. You don't have a lot of you don't have any groomed bridle paths. I'll end up going down a trail that's not a trail and climbing over downfall and, and they're just willing partners. That's mainly the thing I guess that I really like is the way they bond with you and you truly feel like you have a partner when you're out there. At Four Seasons Marchadors, they believe in gentle and patient training methods, working with the horse's mind as much as their physical training. During their training, the horses are exposed to just about everything they might encounter on the trail. This young colt is introduced to rushing water and crossing a stream.
their trainer talks about the exceptional mind of this horse, their endurance, intelligence, willingness to please, and their exceptionally smooth gait. Before I came here, I had no idea about a marchador. I had to Google it to find out what it was and uh, found out some information on it. They're very interesting. Uh, my background is uh, ranching and I've started quite a few colts and so I'm here working with their babies and working with their older horses and I really like this breed because it uh, they've got really inquisitive minds. They're, rare, they're really uh, they're, they're interested, they're curious, they're personable, they, they really want to be with you and like this guy here. <laughs> These horses have like this guy here I don't think I could wear him down. He's just got power and endurance and he can keep his gait all day and he just loves to travel. And I've really enjoyed working with the young horses. They come around really quickly. They're really intelligent. They, uh, they're just really fun to work with and they're, they've been pretty fascinating. Ready to find your inner cowboy and enjoy the best family vacation you will find anywhere? If you're ready to disconnect from that digital lifestyle and reconnect with the things that are really important in life, well, partner, gather the family and make your way to Durango, to Colorado Trails Ranch, for the experience of a lifetime. We'll see you at the corral. The rural American lifestyle. It's how we work. It's how we play. It's how we learn and how we enjoy the finer things in life. How we take care of our animals and tend to the land. It's a way of life. Has been for hundreds of years. Now there's a whole new way for rural America to watch TV. Rather than react to a given situation, the horses tend to think and rationalize their way through something they're not familiar with. I love the way these horses think. They, there's a lot of clinicians now out there talking about getting a hold of the thinking side of a horse's brain versus the reactive or fright side. And I'm not saying that these horses won't spook, because any horse will spook, but these horses lean heavily on the thinking side especially as they get, the more they get to know you, the more they begin to trust you and realize you're not gonna put them into a dangerous situation. I have a, a mare that I took into a, an extreme trail class. I didn't have any anticipation to go into the class. I got into it once I was at the expo and I got talked into going into it. And when I looked at the obstacles, I was a little concerned. I thought maybe I was over my head because uh, I hadn't done any of these obstacles. The thing I think separates these horses and makes them special is their ability and interest in bonding with people. I've had horses out in the pasture where I've had four marchadors and another breed, and they hear the chain on the gate clink, and the marchadors come running, and the other horse stands there and stares at them like, no, don't go, she's gonna put a halter on you. And they all are just in your pocket. Um, I like their personalities. I also like the ability to go anywhere and do anything I want to do. I can ride in the mountains, I can do endurance, I can work cattle, I can do flying lead changes, I can spin my horse and then I can cruise off in gait. Versatility is one of their strongest points, that and the way they bond with people. I need a horse that's versatile because I like to do a lot of things. I've never been one to um, just do arena work or, or anything like that. I like to get out and, and do things. I need a horse that when I call on them, they can be there for me again. Um, when I'm in the mountains, it's, it's wild out there in Montana. It's not groomed trails. And I need something I can count on when I'm working cattle. And their versatility is really nice. I've got horses that, that I work cattle on, and I can take them out and do endurance on them. Um, their heart rate drops amazingly quickly. It's astonishing how quickly. They had a, a bridge that they had put a post under and made it into a teeter-totter and um, she had to step on the high side so when she stepped on it it flopped down and then as she walked across it the back end tipped up and I was sitting pretty deep not sure what she was gonna do and she just walked across it like she'd done it a hundred times. Didn't phase her. 
out of about 50 plus horses and six clinicians were in that class who teach it. And they didn't have an open and novice class. Um, and she came in about fourth overall. So that was, that said a lot for her willingness and her ability to just take a situation and handle it. Their ability to think through a situation versus um, just immediate panic is a real strong point. One of the things that I really like is most of my horses, um, we try to build a lot of confidence when we do a lot of groundwork with them. We do a lot of, a lot of different things. I try to get them to experience everything I can think of. And if they see something that frightens them, I let them stand there for a second, and oftentimes on their own without asking them to, they'll just walk right up to the obstacle all by themselves, all on their own, and check it out. If you just give them time to think about it, they think it through and they want to go check it out. And I really like that. It's a strong point. The Marchadors range in height from 14.2 to 16 hands, with most being in the 15 hand range. All colors are represented by the breed and include grays, roans, bays, blacks, sorrels, and browns. Paint markings, palomino, and buckskins are also common in the breed. In its homeland, the Marchador is largely a working horse, and so it's well suited to gathering cows on the Montana range. Peter and Lori competed in NCHA and local cutting horse competitions for many years and find the Marchadors very well suited as a working cow horse. Marchadors excel at cattle work, but are versatile enough to be trained in almost any discipline, including jumping, dressage, all phases of ranch work, gymkhanas, and make excellent trail and endurance horses. Their elegant carriage, short backs, and natural collection make them excellent sport horses. The suitability extends even to ranch work competitions, as demonstrated after rounding up the herd. Although many people feel reining is the domain of the quarter horse, their trainer demonstrates their versatility and suitability in reining disciplines and discusses their exceptional mind. I think it's been about six years ago, Lori Silcher approached me and told me about this new breed of horse that she was importing and uh, the Marchador and asked me if I would be willing to ride some for her. They've all been over above average horses. Two of them have been completely outstanding, including this one. This is her breeding stallion, Bally. He is a wonderful, wonderful horse. Regardless of what breed he is, he's a wonderful horse. Uh, I'm of the belief that uh, you can have a good horse of any breed, but I'll tell you, the characteristics associated with this breed of horse, um, they're really making a believer out of me and winning my heart. He is amazingly athletic. Um, he can go from a Ferrari to a Humvee and carry up a mountain. And then um, I'm someone who's had a back surgery, so I really, really appreciate the very smooth gait. I think he can clip down the road at probably an easy 10 miles an hour, I don't know, but he can really, he can really cover some ground. And his mind, he just has an absolute golden mind. And that's, of course, uh, something that we need in a reining horse, and that's my specific passion, is, is reining. He wasn't necessarily bred to rain, but he's a very, very versatile individual, and with a mind like this, he can do so many, so many things. Just a very, very sleepy, <laughs> but honest, very, very honest horse. He greets me every day at his stall front with a happy face and happy ears and a wonderful, wonderful work ethic, ready to go to work every day. They are just uh, such a pleasure to be around. Such a, this is a breeding stallion, and he's this kind and this cuddly and this quiet. I'm a dyed-in-the-wool quarter horse paint person, but one day I'm gonna have one of these marchadors. This is a breed with very high standards. A horse is not registered simply by being the product of two registered marchadors, but goes through a rigorous certification process. 
Only horses that pass rigorous inspection on confirmation, disposition, and gates are eligible for permanent registration for breeding stock. Lori serves on the Breed Standards Committee on the United States Manga Larga Marchador Association, as well as promotional director. These horses, um, in order to be registered, have to go through a, a very difficult certification process. As an association, I'm on the board uh, with the U.S. Association, and as a board, we bring uh, registrar up once every couple years and he goes around the country to anyone that needs it and um, certifies our horses and the process takes a very long time it's very difficult it's about a three-part process and part of its on their movement their gait uh, part of its disposition part of it is their confirmation it doesn't matter who their parents are and as a breeder it puts some pressure on a breeder because I stand to have a foal that I'm excited about and if they don't pass, I've just spent three years raising a horse that isn't going to be registered. But I'm a huge supporter of having the inspections done. I think that's what really separates this breed because we do have standards. We do insist on certain traits with these horses that they can't just become registered because of, of their bloodlines and I like that. I don't think it's a bad thing to put pressure on the breeders. I think it's a good thing. It keeps everybody striving to do the best they can, not that they don't already, but it really keeps you striving. It really, when I see a colt that's born, you watch every day, is that colt worthy of being a stallion? Is he, is he stallion material? And uh, a registrar man that comes to certify the horses might inspect the horse and, and say, you know, I just don't feel this horse is stallion material. He doesn't have a high enough number. If you geld him, I'll register him. So, okay, I'll geld the horse. If he feels it's too low, he still won't register it as a gelding. It isn't that he'll register anything, but it helps keep those standards high to where you're not just breeding anything because it, it's able to be bred. And I, I really appreciate that. The Four Seasons Ranch has the distinction of being the only international marchador breeder in the USA and the only importers of the breed since the new, more stringent importation regulations were imposed in 2005. Tombstone Monument Ranch, for a vacation experience like no other, where you can step back in time. Be surrounded by natural Arizona beauty and relive the history of the Old West, all at one guest ranch. We'll see you at the corral. If you're ready to shake the city off of you and discover one of the most peaceful places on earth, if you're ready for horseback riding that no other place can offer and share great times with guests from around the world, if you're ready to discover history that traces back thousands of years, well then partner, make your way to Wolf Creek, Montana and park your boots at the Blacktail Ranch. We'll see you at the corral. One of the Silchers' closest friends is country music recording legend Paulette Carlson, who stopped by to go trail riding with Lori and the horses and to share some musical moments with Lori. Paulette rose to fame in the 1980s as the founder and lead vocalist for the country band Highway 101. In her career, she charted four number one hit singles, seven top ten hits, a gold album, and two back-to-back -back wins for Vocal Group of the Year. Was it difficult to get the horses over Very here? Very difficult to get the horses. It's hard. First off, you have to find the horse you want, so I cover a lot of territory looking at horses at all, a lot of different ranches. So I have people taking me around to different ranches. Then finally, when I do identify the horses, I have to have blood tests to make sure that they're at a level that I can, am allowed to bring them to the United States. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of red tape involved. So they're um, healthy when they're Oh, they're, they're absolutely coming. healthy. They don't let anything into the country without being healthy. Yes. Uh -huh. And they've tightened up the restrictions even in the last few years to where it's more difficult to bring them in than ever, but you can still bring them in. I've brought in three shipments since they've mm -hmm. tightened up the regulations. So mm -hmm. we can do it, yeah. but it takes some doing. And it's, it's a lot of fun when I go down there, but it is actually exhausting because mm -hmm. I just go nonstop. I'm looking at horses. and riding the yeah. whole time and talking to owners and talk, looking at babies and looking at 
product of the horses that I'm and, buying. And there's a lot of different colors in these horses, too. All colors. Yeah. I All remember colors. your stallion you brought over. I believe he was a roan, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, we got it. Real pretty blue roan stud. We had a black one. They're all different colors. Yeah, and you'll ride that pretty yeah. dapple gray. Yeah. I guess he'd be considered I, actually, a gray. Actually, I use them all. Yeah. It just depends on, I do some endurance on some. I yeah. work cows on others. And just yeah. pleasure riding with and of course, of course, the one I love is a bay. Yeah, so don't right. forget that. That's right. Yeah. He's the last you gotta one. you got to ride him a song. song like yeah, my bay. There my bay. Uh, we, won't, we won't call him Blaze, though. I got a song oh, about Blaze. Poor Blaze. Play. He, he had a hard time. Yeah, and, yeah, he didn't quite make it, did he? No. no. <laughs> he just was not quite a marchador, let's just put it that way. There you go. Yeah. Here's one that goes back. He's riding along at the top of the ridge. He's got <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. The Silchers and their dedicated team at Four Seasons Marchadors are a tremendous resource for anyone interested in learning more about this exceptional breed or interested in owning a versatile horse with an exceptional mind. They can assist you in your quest to find the right horse for your particular needs. The Manga Larga Marchador. Discover for yourself why this horse is the national treasure of Brazil. Discover why Four Seasons Marchadors is one of the best resources in North America to help you find the perfect match within this breed. Want to see your horses on TV? Call us today to discuss and we'll show you how to promote your breed or equine related business to a mass TV audience.